Good afternoon. I am Rubana Khan, Assistant Professor in Department of Computer Technology, Priyadarshini College of Engineering, Nagpur. Today, I am going to introduce you the subject Computer Architecture and Organization, which is included in third semester scheme of Computer Technology branch. So today, I am going to cover uh, introduction of the subject, then why we require to study the subject Computer Architecture and Organization, objectives of the subject, various applications where we can use the knowledge which we gain from the subject, and the content of the syllabus that is included in the CT branch. So, as we know, our world becomes the computer world. Everywhere we use the computer. In daily life, uh, either we are using any uh, home appliance like microwave oven, digital camera, washing machine, anything, smart appliances, that all are smart appliances where computer is inbuilt. Our laptops, tablets are smartphones everywhere we are having the computer so here we need to understand how a computer actually works what is there inside the computer what are the components which are present in the computer how they are connected how they are organized so that is what about computer architecture and organization so see how our computer looks in real world we see the computer like there is one output device there will be a uh, various keyboard device there will be one cabinet this is just the cabinet where we have the processing elements that work actually these all are the hardware which are of no use if we don't know how these computer how these processing elements work so this is the basic computer architecture and here we'll get the block diagram of this computer where there will be the motherboard where you will have all the ports through which these input output devices are connected. There will be the processor. In processor there will be your control unit, your arithmetic and logical unit. There will be various memory storage devices. So see we can say our computer is a very complex structure or your comp computers have a very complex structure see this is the motherboard all that we have seen like there will be input devices output devices there will be processor that all included in within this small chip so computer architecture and organization is the study of internal working internal working of all the components which are present in these motherboard and implementation of those uh, individual components together so these two terms that is architecture and organization architecture uh, simply uh, means you can define the architecture as the art or science of designing any object so in real world everything is like an object and every object has some architecture so if we consider about the building building has the architecture okay it has some objects their physical uh, physical characteristics will be there so like that only there will be computer in computer there will be small small functional units and these functional units how they are specified how they are described and uh, how many number of those elements are required that is called as what architecture then organization implementation of that architecture is called as the organization of the system so why we study this computer architecture and organization because we use the computer every day as a user we are using the computer as a computer science student you should know the subject because if you are going to perform if you are going to make any software you should know how your uh, uh, hardware is uh, designed so that implementation of your software should be troubleshoot if any error comes so knowing what's inside and how it works will help you to design to develop and implement the applications better faster cheaper more efficient and easier to use because you will be able to make informed decisions instead of estimating and assuming so that is what actually why we uh, study this computer architecture and organization and use this uh, basic fundamental concepts uh, in your uh, remaining subjects or uh, in your remaining career. 
So this course is about what computers consist of, how computer works, how they are organized internally, what are the design trade-offs, and how design affects programming and applications. So basic objectives to know what are the various functional uh, units which are present in the computer, uh, what is the working of those component, how they are designed, then how they all are connected with each other to form a system. Then, so in real world application, obviously, uh, if you are going to uh, make some uh, software, whether application software or system software, so if you are performing the performance analysis of the software, you should know the design of the hardware on which particular hardware the software is going to be implemented. For parallel software and its execution, you should know the design and architecture, how your components are designed. Obviously, in embedded and mobile computing, you should know uh, what type of uh, what type of component is, what type of hardware, what type of CPU is used, what type of operating system is used in your uh, system. High performance game programming. Obviously, high performance, if you are going for uh, programming the high performance games, then you should know uh, uh, on which particular hardware these games are going to be implemented. So these all are the various applications in real world of the uh, subject. So overall content of your this subject based on this diagram. Here you should know the functional unit of the computer system. What are the various functional units? You should know what are the various components that is input devices, output devices, then your CPU, what is the working inside the CPU that will be covered in the subject? Then how many memory devices are there? How these memories are organized so that you can store your data into the memory and CPU can fetch those data and instructions and execute it. Then uh, now we'll uh, go through the syllabus that we have in the CTEC branch that is in unit number one. Uh, first, we are going to see the what is the basic structure of the computer system in which we'll have the functional units that is input devices, output devices, memory system and your central processing unit. Then inside the CPU, how your instructions are executed. In your uh, CPU, there are various registers like your uh, memory data register, memory address register, where your data and addresses are stored where, from where the data is to be taken and uh, executed inside the CPU. Then all these components are connected via some communication mean that is called as what bus. So we will see the various types of bus structure here that is data bus, address bus and control buses. Then obviously, if you are learning about the hardware, this hardware will be of no use if there is no software. So how, what is the connection between these hardware and software that will be covered here? Then after that, we'll see how your uh, how your programs, whatever the programs, whatever the instructions or whatever the data is stored inside the memory, how they are fetched uh, to the CPU so that CPU get uh, execution. So for that, we will see the various type of instructions here, then uh, assembly language programming, various types of addressing mode, that is the way by which the data data from the memory addresses are fetched that is called as what addressing mode here uh, so in next unit we'll cover the, uh, the see all the units are interconnected so if uh, we have seen the basic functional units in the unit number one and uh, we are starting with the cpu so in cpu what are the basic model of the cpu what can be the components of any processor like there will be instruction register there will be various data register from where the data is to be taken for the execution right so how these instruction uh, what are the various types of instruction that is single byte two byte three byte four byte uh, there will be various types of instructions instructions that are stored into the memory and they are fetched inside the CPU so that execution time will become very small. 
in very uh, quick instant your instructions are going to be executed because they are already fetched inside the processor so that's why they have the various types of registers various general purpose register instruction register there will be pro program counter that is uh, uh, where the address is present from where the uh, next executable instruction is sh uh, should be fetched so here uh, in unit number two, we are going to cover that only processing unit, processing unit may how these instructions are executed, how a, one complete instruction, if suppose I am saying add R1 comma R2, you have to take the data from R1 register, that is general purpose register, add this content with the general purpose register named as R2 contain and add the result into R1. So in one instruction, there are various uh, micro operations okay, at this particular cycle, at this particular clock time, what a micro operation is to be performed. So, uh, for example, this add R1, R2. So, first what is needed, you have to fetch the instruction from the memory. Once the instruction is fetched, it will be loaded into the register IR. Then decoding of that instruction is done. Then after decoding, your processor will come to know okay, where is first operand is present, where is second operand is present, and what type of operation is to be done. Then your first operand is fetched, then your second operand is fetched, and the particular arithmetic or logical operation is performed. So that is what here in unit number two will do. Next in unit number three, in obviously in CPU, we have the arithmetic logical unit and the control unit. One unit ALU which performs the operation and one unit that is control unit which gives the signal what type of operation you have to do. So uh, that control unit is already covered in unit number two. So in unit number three, we will see what type of operations, arithmetic operations are performed inside the ALU. So basically two types of number system that is fixed point number and floating point numbers. So we have to cover fixed point number operations in detail here in unit number three. That is first we will see uh, what type of number representations are there. Then how you will perform the addition of two fixed point numbers. So for addition and for subtraction we have adder and subtractor already. These ICs are available. But in basic model like in 8085 microprocessor we don't have the uh, uh, circuit uh, Circuit uh, circuitry available for multiplication and division. So that's why we require to, uh, we require some algorithm which will perform the multiplication and division. So that algorithm we'll see here for multiplication. We have Booth's algorithm, then uh, fast multiplication, bit pair recording method, and for uh, sign division we have restoring method and non-restoring method. So in the same way, floating point number, what is floating point number and uh, what are the various representation that is IEEE 754 uh, single precision and double precision representation of floating point number and various operations that is addition, subtraction, multiplication and division, how they are performed uh, on the floating point number that will be covered here. Then uh, next comes, so, so till now we have seen what in our uh, operation, uh, in your basic uh, functional unit, we have seen input device, output device, your central processing unit inside that ALU and control unit. So we have covered ALU and uh, ALU and uh, control unit in unit number two and unit number three. So unit number four composed of your memory system where your data actually present. So as there are two types of memory, we all know, Primary memory, secondary memory, secondary memory where we actually store our data permanently, but CPU is connected with the bus with our main memory that is RAM, where the actually data is loaded while execution. So for that we can say for execution your data should be present into RAM, present into main memory. So loader is there which will load the data from secondary storage to main memory here. So as the data comes into the main memory, you hear as the subject is what about hardware so you should know what types of cells are used to store the data so basic here we use obviously for storage we know flip-flops are the basic component which is used to store our one bit of data so here uh, in ram there will be different types of rams that is sim uh, your uh, static ram dynamic ram then there will be rom so here we can use the uh, different technologies to store the data so uh, here we'll see the various memory hierarchy, what type of memories can be there, 
that is simply in CPU, there will be various general purpose registers where you can store the data for execution. But as these registers are very less in number, so that's why we are having some other memories that is cache memory which is connected between your RAM and your CPU so that uh, once you are uh, uh, fetching the data from the RAM that uh, one copy of that will also be stored into the cache memory so that next time whenever you are uh, giving the address your CPU will give the address to fetch the particular data from the RAM that will be searched into the cache memory and if the data is available already there in cache memory that will be given to the CPU directly. And uh, if it is not, then it will go and search into the main memory. Uh, if it's present there, that will come to the uh, CPU as well as one copy will be stored into the cache memory. If again in RAM data is not available, obviously your whole data and program is present into the secondary storage. So it's the task of your virtual memory management that is operating system to bring the data which is required at this particular time whose address is generated, uh, bring it into main memory from the secondary storage by the concept of uh, paging, segmentation, hybrid method and then that data will be loaded into RAM then again the from RAM it will be given to the CPU registers as well as one copy will be stored into the cache memory that is what how your memory management operating system and the what type of hardware is there how they work together so done with control unit your uh, LU then memory then last is what here uh, obviously input output devices various types of IO devices which are available that we'll see here uh, then how these IO devices work with the CPU if they want to send the data to the CPU how they interrupt the system because every time your CPU is the master any other device cannot directly go inside the system and use the system buses they have to take the permission from the CPU okay whether can I send my data can I use your address bus can I use your data bus can I use your control bus so that is what interrupt so every time uh, whenever any IO device want to access the CPU access the resources it has to interrupt the system so here we will see the various types of interrupts interrupt mechanism and then uh, if any device want to directly communicate with the memory then direct memory access will be there then synchronous or synchronous data transfer we'll see then uh, we'll see the higher version of processor that is risk and CISC processor array processor loosely coupled tightly coupled system vector processing these all are the parallel processing advanced processors that will be covered in unit number five so after completing all this there will be various outcomes from the uh, each unit so for example in unit number one we have seen the basic functional units operational concept of the computer system and we will apply the assembly language programming for that so that is the outcome of unit number one then from outcome of unit number two is various instruction formats we will illustrate the various instruction format and interpret the execution of complete instruction in the processing unit control unit and sequencing then unit number three we will apply uh, analyze and apply the logic circuit for implementing arithmetic operations that is uh, addition multiplication and division then we will compare and analyze various memory system including semiconductor rom ram cache and virtual memory and in unit number five uh, your outcome will be uh, to, uh, your students will be able to explain the computer peripherals classify advanced processor and processor families so by this subject will get the uh, basic knowledge that is fundamental concepts how your computer is uh, architectured and how it is implemented by the organization so here various textbooks which are uh, uh, available that is computer organization by Hamacher and Zaki, fifth edition that you can use. Uh, you can go through with the computer architecture and organization that is Hayes book, third edition. And uh, computer organization design and architecture by Sajjan G. Shiva, fourth edition. Computer system and architecture by Manu. Then computer organization and architecture by Williamster. So thank you.